Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I want to talk about the Excel 2019 exam, and we're going to look at the domain called Manage Data Cells and Ranges. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so that you can see what we're looking at today. This video started to get a little bit long, so we're going to break this up into two parts. This is the first video, and in this video, we're going to cover subdomain one, called Manipulate Data in Worksheets and Subdomain 4, Summarize Data Visually. Let's go ahead and jump into Excel. We're talking about the Excel 2019 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Manage Data Cells and Ranges. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. We're looking at the first subdomain called Manipulate Data in Worksheets. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to paste data by using special paste options. I'm going to go ahead and select the range A4 to K9. I'm going to hit Control C on my keyboard to copy. You can also click the Copy button on the Home tab. It's up to you how you wish to do this. And what we're going to do is look at pasting this data in different ways. Now I can select a cell and click paste to paste that or I can use the keyboard shortcut control V. But notice what happens when I click the drop down for paste. I have a lot of other options. Let's go ahead and right click here in A11. Some options are the paste the values. We can paste the formulas. You can of course transpose the data which just flips it. You can do a paste link. We also have some more options here. If I click the arrow here I have more options and then if I click paste special Notice that a window is brought up and I even have more paste options. So when I right click here, one that I use on a regular basis is the paste values. I'm going to go ahead and paste that. Obviously you see that the blue fill and white letter has been removed and it's just pasted the black text with no fill. But something else to note is right here in K12, the number 40, if I click K5, notice it's actually a formula. It just pasted the result on that. There's a lot of special paste options that you should be familiar with. Go ahead and undo that paste and hit escape to remove my copy. The next thing that it tells me that I need to be able to do is to fill cells using the autofill. Right here in K5, I showed you that I had a formula. Because this is a relative reference, I can actually use the autofill or the drag fill to copy this formula to the other employees. If I put my cursor in the bottom right hand corner of that cell, notice that my cursor changes to a black cross. And if I click and drag that down, notice that my reference changed from F5 to J5. Here it's F6 to J6, and it did it for every employee because this was a relative reference. And we use the autofill to do that. I use the drag fill to complete this task, but on the home tab in the editing group, you do have some of the fill in series. Let's go and look at a few more examples of this. On sheet two, I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If I select that range, I can use the drag fill to copy down the rest of the days of the week. Notice that Excel realized that that was a series. Same thing with the months of the year. Up at the top, I have January, February, and March. If I select those cells, I can drag fill to the right, and notice it carried out the months of the year for me. Right here, I have a few numbers. In C3, I just have one number to select from. If I click and drag that down, notice that Excel doesn't realize that there's a series here. There's not. And so what it did was it just copied that number down. But here I have one, two, and three. If I select those cells and click and drag that down, Excel realizes that this is a series and it was able to just put the next number on that series. And then I'll show you one other one. Notice here that I have one, three, and five. I'm skip counting. So if I select that and I drag that down using drag fill, Excel realizes that I'm skip counting and it continues that series. The autofill, the drag fill has a lot of power. It is a feature that you should be familiar with. It will make your life easier. We're also told that we need to be able to insert and delete multiple columns or rows. If I wanted to insert a column to the left of D, if I click on D, I can right click and go to insert. And notice a brand new column was added before D. Notice that all the data was pushed to the right. I can do the same thing with rows. If I wanted to add a row between Ryan and Alexis, I could right click on seven and click insert. And notice I just added a row between those two names. 
If I wanted to add multiple columns or rows, if I select that, right click and click insert, and notice that it went ahead and it added two new columns to the left of my first selection. And I can do the same with rows. We're also told that we should be able to delete columns, rows, and multiple columns and rows. And that's just like inserting a column or a row. All I have to do is select what I want to delete. So for this, we'll do D, E, and F. With that selected, I'll right click on it and click delete. And notice that they disappeared. Same thing with the row. Just right click, select delete, and now that row is gone. The last thing that this tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert or delete cells. If I put my cursor in G3, I'm going to right click, click on insert. And notice I have a few options here. I can shift cells right. I can shift cells down. I can do an entire row or an entire column. For this example, I'm going to do shift cells down. And notice what happens. Notice that it pushed all of my data down just for that column. And if I wanted to delete that cell, if I right click on it and go to delete, I get similar options that I saw in the previous window. For this, I'm going to select shift cells up and notice what happens. We're on the subdomain called Summarize Data Visually. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert spark lines. I'm going to put my cursor in L5. I'm going to go to the Insert tab, and I'm going to go to the Spark Lines. Now, there's three different types of spark lines. You have the Line Spark Line, you have a Column Spark Line, and then you have the Win Loss Spark Line. On the exam, you could be asked to carry out any three of these, but it'll be obvious on the exam as to which one you should select. You just got to read carefully. For this first one, we'll go ahead and select line. Our data range for this, we're just going to go ahead and select the hours for Holly for Monday through Friday and let go. Some things to note, I've seen my students do this, is they'll end up selecting like a total row that's going to skew the spark line. You don't want to select a total row. Something else I've noticed that they try and do is they'll select all of the employees because in the task question, it's implying that it wants it for all employees. And that's not how you're going to apply it for all employees. You just want to select each individual employee, and then you'll use a feature like drag fill to apply it to the other employees. So with my range, I'm good with that. This second box is just asking us to verify the location that we've already selected. L5 is perfect, and we'll click OK. Because Holly worked eight hours every day, this line's a little bit weird, but let's go ahead and drag this down so that we can see some variation. Let's go ahead and select an individual one. We'll select L6. With that selected, I have the Sparkline Tools Design tab, and we can do things like edit data. We can change this to a column. And notice I went ahead and updated all of them for me. In the Show section, we can highlight things like high points or the low points, and there's some other features. And then we also have the ability to change some of the style options. Maybe we want this to be green and dark green. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to apply built-in conditional formatting. Let's go ahead and select Friday's hours. We're on the Home tab. We're in the Styles group, and I'm going to click the conditional formatting drop-down. Now, there's a lot in this section, and you should be familiar with the different types of conditional formatting that you can apply. For example, we can do some highlight cell rules with things like greater than, or maybe we want text that contains, or maybe just between certain numbers or dates. Those are all options in the highlight cell rules. We also have some top and bottom rules where it says top 10 items or maybe the top bottom items. Don't be deceived by the number that's listed in this description. You can change it from 10 to 15 to 50 or maybe just three. Once you click that, it'll give you more options. You have some data bars. You have a gradient fill. And you also have some solid fill. You have color scales. And then you have some icon sets. So if we wanted to apply flags, we could. Let's undo that because I want to look at the top and bottom rules just because, again, it can be deceptive with that 10 being in there. But notice with that range selected, I can change it from 10 down to 2 or 1. And notice that as I was clicking through those numbers that it went ahead and updated my selection. And I'm not stuck with this light red fill, dark red text. I can choose one of the other settings. So maybe I want green fill with dark green text or I can choose custom format. And within this window, I can change so many settings. On the font tab, you can change the font, the colors. You have some border options. You can change the fill. There's really a lot in this window. But for this, we'll just keep it green fill with dark green text. And we'll click OK. 
the last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to remove conditional formatting. Let me go ahead and go to this worksheet two tab because I want to show you this. And this is some work that we did in a different part of this domain. I'm on the home tab. I'm in the styles group. If I click conditional formatting drop down again and I select manage rules, notice that my rules not listed and it's because of the worksheet that I'm on. If I go to sheet one and then come back to this window, it should be listed or from the show formatting rules, I can change it to sheet one and notice that that's now there. And from here, I can select it and click delete. Or if I need to edit the rule, of course, I can click edit rule. Just note, you should be familiar with the different conditional formatting options. We'll go ahead and delete this rule, click apply, OK, and we'll go back and see that it's gone. Mm -hmm.